Hey guys, I have a few minutes before my buddy shows up, so uh, I'm gonna answer a couple questions that are put to me under the last video on YouTube. I have a question, do we need to be great competitive programmer to become great developer? Short answer is no. I haven't looked closely at competitive programming, but it's a bit of a gimmicky thing for me. Being able to solve complex algorithms in a short period of time does not make a good programmer. A good programmer has a variety of skills. First of all, they have a good understanding, a good grasp of the fundamentals. They're able to communicate really well. They have a good grasp of best practices when it comes to software development. Simple clean code, modular code, self-describing code, good documentation, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is far, far more important when it comes to um, being a good software developer than being able to solve programmatic brain teasers quickly. Trust me. In the real world of project development, the amount of times you're going to run into a, uh, a particular brain teaser type of situation where you have to come up with some interesting algorithm to process a bunch of data, as an example. This may happen once a project, maybe twice in a project, if that much. Most of of the work is going to be laying laying out properly structured software software that is easy to update software that is easy to maintain software that makes sense i won't go into all the details here i teach some of this in my my courses of course but yeah don't get fooled into thinking that it's all about brain teasers and how fast you can write the code uh, what's much more important is um these big picture issues that I just discussed. Somebody asked me, so which to learn, PHP or WordPress? I would learn PHP first. You don't have to become an expert PHP developer. Just have your head wrapped around PHP coding. Why? Because WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, many shopping cart implementations are PHP based. And even if you're just configuring and uh, modifying a little bit, given your project's needs, Knowing PHP and understanding the big picture around client-server programming, and PHP is all about that, will make your life so much easier. Even if you're not an active PHP developer, trust me, that's why in my course I, I teach PHP as, as one of the key languages. I'm not necessarily saying you have to become a PHP developer. As I've said in many videos, as a professional developer, you want to be language agnostic. You want to realize, you want to understand that the language does not define you as a developer. The language is just a tool. It, to make an analogy, if you wanted to become a, a musician, you wouldn't say, I play only the Stratocaster or I only play a Gibson Les Paul. That's it. No, you're a musician, you're a guitarist, you play any guitar. Doesn't matter what guitar, you play any guitar and you choose a guitar right for the situation. So a band, one of my favorite bands of all time, Led Zeppelin, the, uh, the guitarist Jimmy Page, considered one of the best guitarists in history, he would choose different guitars depending on the sound that he'd want for a particular track. You gotta think that way when it comes to development. The language, the uh, frameworks, the libraries, the server configuration, all depends on the circumstance of the project. So don't be somebody who's locked into that box who, I'm only a Node.js programmer. I'm only a C++ programmer. I am only a Python programmer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is not a question, but I like this comment by Rick Strafi. He writes, WordPress is like a bumblebee. Computer scientists that study the core code have concluded that it is a miracle that it works at all. It's a clearly a product that taught the original developers how to work with PHP in my SQL. Anyway, we'll scratch that last sentence, but that's so true. You look at PHP code, and I haven't looked at it in a long time, but it used to be a super big mess, trust me. That's why if you ever want to extend the, the functionality in WordPress, you never touch the core, right? There's too many disadvantages. Number one, the core is messy. Number two, if you touch the core, when they make updates to fix bugs and so on, you're gonna, you're gonna get into problems, right? Because your, your, your core won't match with their core and you got problems. That's why they have a plugin architecture. You use the plugin architecture to extend uh, WordPress, yes. 
I've never argued that WordPress was a marvel of programming. <laughs> Far from it. But it's so widely used uh, that it uh, is something worth learning, especially if you want to get into the freelance space. A lot of big money to be made being a WordPress professional. And that teaches you something. As I've said before, WordPress is just one example. Mac OS, the original, is just one, another example. W Windows, another example. The code does not have to be great for an application or piece of software for it to have tremendous success in the marketplace. What's more important is that the, f as far as what the user is concerned, it's easy, it's simple, and it gets the job done and does what they want. The user experience far exceeds in terms of importance than the quality of the code. Code can be refactored, code can change. And in fact, if you look at the current version of Windows, the current version of Mac OS, uh, the current version of uh, well, so many applications, they, the code base that made Apple a huge successful company, namely the code base behind Mac OS, from Mac OS 1 through 9 was one code base and Mac OS 10 and up is a totally different code base. So the code base did not define the product. It was the user experience and the branding that defined the product. I know for a lot of engineer types, coder types who don't think in that way, it's hard to get your mind wrapped around there. I had that problem too, I have to admit, back in the day. I used to always think code base, code base, code base, code base, code base. Code has to be good, code has to be good. It has to be in terms of maintenance and so forth. But really, the success of a product, and WordPress is like the poster child for this, the success of a product has much more to do with how easy the app is in terms of the user point of view and whether it solves the user's problems. Keep that in mind. Hey, Stefan, how is a career in digital marketing? I think that with digital marketing, um, the barriers to entry, and let me emphasize entry, are low. You know, anybody can post to Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or something. But to operate at a high level, I think that's a different game. I think it takes, like any profession, it takes good digital marketers to really get competent a few years to get there at, at a very high level where the money can be big. But the problem you're faced with, like any artistic and semi-artistic, if you will, endeavor, the barrier to entry is low. So when the barrier to entry is low, the number, the competition that's out there is more fierce uh, for the lower end, the low hanging fruit client, meaning the cheaper clients, because they don't understand the value at that point anyway, the lower end clients. It, it's hard for them to discern the value between the, the really competent digital marketer versus the some bozo with a, with a smartphone now uh, who posts this Instagram or something. But that's where reputation comes in. That's where reputation, something I talk about consistently on this channel, one's reputation is super valuable. You have to cultivate, build and cultivate and protect your reputation as an individual, as a professional, because it's so valuable. For example, because I've been at this for hundreds of years, software developer, uh, tech entrepreneur, I know this stuff, people contact me all the time wanting to throw money at me just to get my opinion on things. I can go out there and, 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 and uh, get work like this if I want to be a contractor. For example, you saw I put some ads on the site, on the YouTube channel recently, and I did that more or less as an experiment. I wanted to see what it would be like to deal with advertisers paying me money and just to go through the process. Um, and by the way, I've done it, I've done a few ads, well, more than a few ads. I refuse, like, so many. You have no idea how many I refuse. And I think I'm going to stop doing ads now. The money's okay. It's not great. The money's okay. Uh, I wanted to just experience that, right? There's nothing like doing it to understand. It's like when I wanted to learn how to fight, I got into fights. When I wanted to learn how to box, I jumped in the ring, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We want to code. Once you get past the basics, you just start writing code. You start writing code. So same thing. So with the digital, digital marketing, I think it's a good um, 
it's a good thing. I think it's super important for business, by the way. But that's going to be, you, you're going to have to really work on reputation there. Which proves that, you know, if you, you develop good reputation, uh, that shows, A, that you have the skill, right? Because be, developing good reputation has a lot to do with digital marketing in the first place. And once you've got a good reputation, you'll be able to get the high-paying gigs. Uh, but until you develop good reputation, uh, you're going to have uh, to de compete with, uh, I said, the, the kid with the iPhone, right? So, uh, yes, it is, a good, uh, it is a good business. But on the low end, it's probably very saturated competitive. But I think it's just starting that business because, in a sense, well, it's not just starting, but I think there's a lot of room there because people are seeing more and more, companies are seeing more and more, the, the, the economy, people, the businesses around the world are starting to see more and more that ad money is better spent online than on traditional uh, mediums like TV or radio or print or something. They rather uh, place their ads online, whether it be through Google or through uh, YouTube influencers or Instagram influencers, far more effective, far more effective ad spend there than the more traditional approaches. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, Facebook ads, they're effective in some circumstances, but other areas like you heard, apparently uh, Facebook has to settle something where uh, Facebook video, they were uh, apparently, and I don't know for sure, I didn't read the detail, details, but they, they over, stated the reach that Facebook videos were having. And I kind of suspected it. That's why you don't see me post on uh, videos on Facebook uh, too often anymore because I didn't find them very effective. I didn't find it fair either. You know, it's like on YouTube, you post a video. It's great marketing exposure. And it's my hobby as much as anything else. YouTube realizes that we're partners with YouTube. We're partners with them. So when we run ads, we get a split of the revenue, which kind of makes sense, right? Because to produce video it takes time. You got to film, you got to edit, et cetera, et cetera. You got to buy the equipment to do it, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas with Facebook video, I'm like, how's that fair? You know, it's like they, I put up a video. Not only do I not get paid, if I build an audience, I have to pay Facebook to access this audience that I built. How is that fair? It's not fair. So, that's why it's a couple of reasons why I don't go on Facebook. Anyway, so back to digital marketing. Yeah, I think it's useful. I think it's a good thing to get into, and I would, uh, uh, I would, I would do it uh, if I, if you know, uh, if you have some coding skills with that, it makes you ten times more valuable because, you know, to to be able to work the the platforms properly, having a good understanding of the code behind the scenes, how these systems work, would just make you more effective. But anyway, that's it. My friend's about to show up, so I guess I will let you go.